and we are live good day everybody and welcome can you see me can you hear me if you can see me you can hear me let me see you right in the comment section all righty we are back here and it's tuesday live every 2 p.m we're here live sharing with you not get to parenting that saves life yes how to identify your child's learning strength i'm sure a lot of people saw this topic and they are thinking how to identify your child's learning style no that's not what today is about it is how to identify your child's learning strength there are two different things tell me where you're logging in from tell me where you're viewing life from tell me where you can see me from all right all right tell me tell me tell me tell me please give me a minute okay thank you so tell me where you're streaming live from tell me where you are right now and invite a friend invite someone what you're going to be learning today might actually save someone's parenting system might actually save someone's parenting right how do you understand your child's learning strength knowing a child's learning strength is always useful when you're exploring ways to help them you know many of the times you find out that a lot of parents are struggling okay seriously struggling seriously struggling and not because the child isn't smart but because we do not even understand who the child we are raising is and i've come to see you know realize in my few years of coaching parents that many of us do not know who we're raising so very many of the times you find out that you are focused on what it is that the child you know doesn't need i ask a question if a child is struggling with mathematics and the child is doing well playing tennis for instance hi mom my mom is here and the child is doing well playing tennis for instance what kind of teacher will you hire let me see your comment in the comment section the child is struggling in math and the child is doing so well playing tennis what kind of teacher to want to help the child will you hire for the child straight question yeah easy question very easy and straightforward let me see your comments in the comment section let me see you all right Onyinye from angola awesome i see you guys tennis teacher all right mathematics teacher mm, let's go let's go let's go tennis teacher let's go let's go somebody said both let's go coach let's go let's go let's go let's go in the comment section let's go in the comment section let's see you let's see you yes get it get it buzzing tennis and match match no 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 choose one please don't put both why are you putting both do you want to kill the child what well, which which teacher are you going to hire just let's see that right in the comment section all righty all righty go 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 somebody said i don't know i love that sincerity i do not know and it's okay not to know there's nothing wrong with not knowing it's only in this in our climate that we think that not knowing is a problem so we need to know all the time no we actually do not really need to know all the time yes yes there'll be time where we don't know i will hire a tennis teacher because i am now a yada yippee now a lot of the people who are saying i'll hire a tennis teacher i can see uh the people who are you know in the academy is confusing coach yes it can be confusing now many of the times we want we think that we, we we want to teach a child struggling with something by giving them more of that thing and that's because we do not understand the strength that that child it's so i've said several times that you don't teach a child math by extra mathematics so if you teach a child a child who is struggling with maths and you're hiring extra math teacher that child is actually not going to be able to give you the result you're looking for now the truth is as much as it looks like it is the place where he's struggling you should focus on yeah and i usually say that when you focus on the weakness of a child you weaken the child for that Somebody help that in the comment section. 
Somebody said, what if the teacher, the tennis teacher is not good in maths? You don't need someone who is good in maths. Come on. And that's why you should attend the, the understanding your child's learning style. You don't need someone who is good in maths. That's not what you need. You need to be able to understand the strength of that child. I say again, when you hit on the child's strength, you actually excel. When you hit on the child's weakness, you weaken the child. So what most of us do is that we weaken that child further because we are focusing on what we shouldn't focus on. Now, what do I mean? You are going to be, you know, the guy is already struggling and you are trying to, you know, hit the brain. The brain doesn't understand it. That's what it means. It's, it's as simple as that. So the concept of teaching maths in that aspect, in that, so you don't learn maths by more maths. Maths is problem solving. Once a child cannot get the basics of mathematics, the child is not going to be able to solve mathematics. Now, many people are going to argue with me and say, oh, my child struggled, right? And you hired a math teacher and my child started doing well. Is there anybody like that here? My child struggled with maths. I hired a math teacher. My child has started to do well. So coach, this thing you are saying is wrong. Is there anybody here? You know that it's, it's when, you, when you meet a coach that knows what she's doing. Uh, all right. Is there anybody there like that? Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. I want today to be very interactive. Let's go. Anyone whose child has been struggling and you hired a math teacher, for instance, and the child started to even do better. Meme, would they say I'm here? Before, yes, physics. Awesome. Um, Julie said I'm here. So, of course, what I'm saying now might sound a bit confusing to you. Because you're going to be start, you know, thinking, what she's saying? Why is she talking about, you know, this? But I have succeeded doing it. And my child has passed exams. Now, that's the flip side. Now, when you teach, when you teach mathematics, mathematics is not just about passing exams. Unfortunately, mathematics is about problem solving. So many of these children will go ahead. The brain is going to adjust, cram it, pass the exams, but they still do not understand the concept of mathematics. The good thing about teaching the concept is that when the child understands the concept, they will pass both exams. I wasn't. Oh, so sorry about that. I just realized that I was having a bit of a network issue, but I think I'm back. Please, can you see me? Can you hear me? Can you reconfirm to me that my network is back now? Mm. So network, yes, please coordinate yourself. <laughs> We're not having it. So one of the things that happened is just like, it's just like how we were taught to learn. Most of us passed exams but we didn't learn how to learn. So we struggled with learning. So even after we have passed exams, most of us made two one, most of us were tops of our class, but we can't really, we, did, we, we didn't really learn. I don't know if there's anybody feeling me. We didn't really learn. You just passed exams for the sake of passing exams because the focus of what it is that our parents did was the focus on result. And that's what you're doing today. 
your focus is on result. Oh, I want the result to come out well. Provided the child meet all A's, then it is okay. But it's possible that your child can make all A's and not learn. Very possible. Very possible. So it is the wrong focus. And that's the same thing we do with our children today, math, English, all right? So we, we, we all pass exams. Our children are passing exams. But are you really thinking about it? All right? Are you really thinking about it? Are they really learning? That thing that they are learning, can they really use it? Do you know I was sitting down with my children? I have a set of twins who are teenagers, 14. And I was sitting down with them and having a conversation with them about some things I learned in a Greek. Me like this. I'm smart too. Don't even think I'm not smart. I'm smart, right? I came out of some of my class in uni. So, and they were telling me something about Agri. Honestly speaking, I am sure I learned that thing. I think it's about monocotyledon, something of that nature. I learned it, I'm so sure. I passed that Greek very well, self. And when they were telling me that thing, do you know, I, I knew it, but I didn't understand the concept. They were breaking down the concept for me. And I was like, oh my God. So this is what that thing meant. But I passed now. I made an A in a Greek. I loved that Greek, interestingly. But the result, examination result, thank you so much, Gov, and Gov is here. Examination results are just one out of many things to show for learning. Thank you so much for that, sir. There are too many other things that learning, right, that learning is so-called. There are so many concepts that my children share that I struggle to understand. Not that I wasn't taught, I was taught, but I just passed the exams. I crammed it to pass because I needed to pass because I needed to prove a point. So most of our going to school, passing, right, making A's was to prove a point, both for us and for our parents. We were not taught how to learn. There is a how to learn. And that's why most of us come out of school. You find out that there's no joy of learning. You don't read anything after school. You don't ever read one word after school. You don't, most of us have not picked one book like this to read since you left university. But you work because the essence was to pass exams, make good grades, work. But that whole thing about learning is gone. Do I have a witness in the room? Do I have a witness in the room? Now, knowing your child's learning strength is useful when you're exploring ways to help them learn new information. No one learns new information without their strength in learning. Without their strength in learning. And this will also help you to find the best studying options for them. Many of us today, when our children are writing exams, we are, we are, you know, we are jumping, we are anxious because we need to sit down with our children and, you know, write the exams, you know, teach them. Our children can't really study on their own. They don't really understand the concept of learning. I stopped studying. I, I've never studied with my children, even when they were toddlers. Anything that they can't understand, then you need to get, get it back to school. It means that they didn't learn it. So you need to find the strength. I, I'm sharing this with you because I went through that. I went through that road. I went that road, this same road I'm, I'm sharing with you. Where because of the kind of strength, learning strength our daughter had in reading, she started reading very fast. Very fast. By the time she was four, she was already reading. Her son wasn't reading. He, we didn't understand the strength because for him to actually assimilate that new information, the strength should have been harnessed. Now, he struggled with reading for so long, and yet he's a very smart guy, right? And then eventually we now got it. I'm very passionate about understanding how your child learns, understanding their strength. I'm very passionate about it because I've been hit. And a lot of the children have been named Olodo today just because their parents are ignorant or not knowledgeable about their strength and how they learn. Part of your child learning strength is your child learning style. By the time we realized I had to go learn, 
that our son was a kinesthetic learner. It made sense. So he couldn't have learned how to read the way our daughter had learned how to read. So by the time this, you know, marked, we also found out that the school, the school our children were attending cannot get it right. That's the truth. Because they didn't understand the concept. So we had to pull our son out of that school and take them to another school who understood the strength in learning and the learning style. Now, 90% of the schools that I have interacted with do not understand learning styles. So therefore, they don't cater for kinesthetic learners. Kinesthetic learners are learners who are, you know, everywhere, jumpy. Who, who is here that has, you know, a child that is jumpy, doesn't stay in one place, cannot just just cannot just read. He just wants to jump. He just wants to, you know, do things. He just wants to. He's hands-on, but he cannot sit and read. You might be that parent. And then they're telling you, this child cannot read. This child doesn't know. This child, this child, this child, this child, not, this child is not. This child is not. This child is not. And you too, you are actually in that space where you are struggling. What do I do? What you need to do is that you need to actually learn how your child learns and learn what is their learning strength. So part of what I'm going to be teaching today is about learning strength. But you will need to learn your child's learning style. So now know how to factor in that learning style to help your child also develop the other parts of their learning style. For instance, our son is a kinesthetic learner. However, you, you would need to develop the other areas of that learning. What would you do? We used kinesthetic learning style to develop his other learning styles, auditory, visual, because the world doesn't revolve around him. So he's going to go to school in secondary school or university. He's going to force the lecturer to teach using all of the activities just because he's a kinesthetic learner. So part of what you do when you understand that your child is a particular kind of learner or is a particular, has a particular kind of strength, you begin to build from strength to weakness. You don't build from weakness to strength. When you focus on the weakness of a child, you actually weaken the child the more. So if your child is dominant sanguine, dominant kinesthetic, ah, like my son, that means he's everywhere, you know, popping and all of that. So you need to actually do a lot of work. Many years down the line, our son is a top A grade student, not just an A grade, top A grade student. Anytime, any day. Smart to the tit. A child, every child is born smart. The problem is our parenting style, our lack of knowledge actually is what determines if that child is actually going to be able to build around that strength or not. So your parenting style is a big deal. <laughs> I usually say that every child is born a genus. Parent in the genus system. Parent in the genus system. So if your child is born, no child is dumb. Forget that thing. No child is dumb. We just have children who learn differently in a way that we don't understand. So the moment you teach a child, you find out that the child is struggling to, to understand how you are teaching. It becomes a problem. One of the reasons why I urge even parents who have older children to attend the understanding your child's learning style for yourself is that you will now begin to understand that you teach with your own dominant learning style. That's the problem. So many times it becomes a challenge because you're teaching on your strength. So for instance, you are a visual learner. You're constantly going to teach in a visual path. I'm an auditory learner. I love words. I love to listen. So I talk. So I am not as visual as many people are. I might not remember what it is that you wore, but I remember your name because you said it to me. So I'm going to use that style very many of the times until I learn that not everybody learned the way that I learn. So you see this thing I'm doing with my hands is a kinesthetic learner thing. I had to learn to do it because a kinesthetic learner is watching me right now. This thing I'm doing with my hands is not distracting to him. A visual learner is watching me right now. This thing I'm doing, they're going to see it. 
because they are visual. Some of you might not remember what I wore today, but visual learners are going to see me now. Remember, Coach wore this, you know, last week. And this week, she's wearing green again. So sometimes in the inner circle, inner circle um, you know, um, system, I come out for Thursday webinar, and the first thing you hear is, Coach is wearing red. Because they are visual learners. That red is a pointer, you know, to them. So it is important for you to actually understand the learning style, both for you and for your child. All right? Both for you and for your child. And, you know, these things are not cast on stone. I also do not want parents to say, that's why we say, come and learn about the, the understanding your child learning style course, because I don't want parents to say, yes, I know how my child learns. He's a kinesthetic learner. And then what? And then what? Because by the time you 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 are you are you are now saying so you label the child so my child is a kinesthetic learner and so therefore everybody should teach him in a kinesthetic way no it doesn't work like that because the world doesn't belong to him unfortunately so why you need the knowledge is actually to be able to have how you can actually help your child grow from that strength that they have with the kinesthetic learning style or the auditory learning style to the weakness. Because that weakness is still important. Right now, our son learns in secondary school. He's in secondary school. Right? <laughs> He's in secondary school. And I cannot be in that class teaching and, and telling the teachers, you know what? Teach only my son. He's an activity person. So do only activity. It doesn't work like that. All right? Now, children don't approach every new learning tax in exactly the same way. But how your child interacts with information probably falls into patterns that draw on natural talent and preferences right now these patterns are learning strength and they are pathways to learning they are pathways to learning now learning strength combine talents abilities with existing skills and knowledge to help your child taking new information so you need to understand the talent you need to understand personality. Do you know that the personality of your child affects how they learn? If you have a sanguine child who, you know, has a core, you know, sanguine part, and your child maybe you know cheerful, bubbly, and all of that, and now also that same child is a kinesthetic learner. That means you're, you're going to have a child who struggle with a lot of skills naturally. This chat class will not permit me to just go into that, but let's just run now. These strengths are ways of thinking. What are these strengths we're talking about? Ways of thinking, ways of feeling, ways of acting. They can be used effectively. You, you see that some children have natural empaths. While some children, you need to actually groom their skills on you know, emotional intelligence more. Some children are naturally organized. While some children are not naturally organized, our daughter is naturally a put together child. You don't really need to do so much teaching how to put her things together. Our son is the opposite. So you find out that when you are caught up in the web of, of comparison, so many of the times, you find out that instead of this becoming an advantage, you make it a disadvantage and you weaken the child because you're hitting on the child's weakness. That strength for that, I have a set of twins, so you can imagine how it is. So that strength for that other child might not be a strength for this other child. Can I still be heard? All right, is my, is my photo clear? Please let me know. All right, please let me know, let me know. Another way, another, you know, may know something that was by just being a path. Okay, there are many different ways of learning strengths. Not clear. Somebody said my screen is blurry. Give me one minute. Okay, I've, I've switched my network. I want to 
pray and believe that we're going to have a better, clearer, you know, quality of picture. Thank you very much. Confirm to me that my screen is no longer blurry. Let's go there. Now, there are many different types of learning strength. For example, some children are drawn to words. While some are good with their body movements, some do very well with new information visually. Other common part with learning is listening to information. Some do very well with finding patterns. Some do very well with working with other people. Many people learn best through combination of these you know, areas of strength. But you need to find out what is the area of strength for your child. We realize that our child is, our son is a social learner. So for social learners, it's a, it's, a, it's a strength of learning. For social learners, you find out that most of them can actually learn in groups. While there are people who are not social learners, it is not their strength. So, you know, you have that child. You just say, what is it? Why is it that in class? You cannot, you, you find your child, the child goes to school in class, the child is not really doing well, but at home, the child says everything he learns because he's not a social learner. It should get you to a point where So sorry about that. I don't know why I have this network dealing with me today. But I guess, <laughs> hey, I guess that you can see me. All right. Yes, I'm frozen. I was frozen, but I guess that it's okay now. Thank you so much for being here. Okay. So I was talking about, you know, being able to understand the strength of the child. So instead of, you know, bringing out the strength, you, what you do is that you begin to look at how that helps you, okay? Now, the role of thinking styles. Yes, Nigeria is happening to me. The role of thinking styles. There's also thinking styles. Now, remember I said there are learning strength, there are thinking styles. People have varying levels of natural ability in different areas. So your child's set of abilities help make up a unique intelligent footprint right intelligent footprint all right and you know what we call food, food it, but it's not the only factor that's not the only factor there is a thinking style the thinking style of your child that's the way the child processes information is a thing and the thinking style of your child can also be groomed. That's the growth mindset. So if your child is not a reflective thinker, you can actually also teach your child to do that. So some children are reflective thinkers. This is a parenting thing. A child being a reflective thinker or not is a parenting thing. So when there, well, there are some children who are global thinkers, so you, you realize that the exposure that you give your child is a determining factor to many things that is going to happen to your child. So whether the child is a global thinker or a reflective thinker will be dependent on what it is, how your family is run, the knowledge that is in that home, and the things that also, you know, um, um, that is also, you know, being given. Now, these children who are global thinkers usually have a hard moment when everything makes 
you know, sense all at once. The reflective thinker, they need time to consider all aspects of an idea until it makes sense to them. Right? Now, the importance of growth mindset is to tell you that just because children have a natural ability in one area doesn't mean that they cannot build ability in other areas. And that's what this conversation today is about. Your child has this kind of strength in learning in groups. It does not mean that they cannot build strength in learning alone. At the beginning of this class, I asked you a question. If your child is struggling with mathematics, will you hire a math teacher or will you hire a tennis teacher? So your child is struggling in mathematics and your child is doing well in tennis. Many people told me that they will hire a math teacher. Some said they will hire a tennis teacher. Some said they will hire both. Now, the answer to that question is that you hire a tennis teacher. Why? You're trying to build from the strength. It is from that strength you are going to get your child to also learn how to solve problems. The concept is that your child doesn't understand the concept of mathematics. So you can teach your child the concept of mathematics by cooking, by, by playing games, but you can teach it with anything, really, actually games and activities. But you need to understand the concept, the fundamental concept to it. So if you hire more math teacher for that child, you put the child, you set the child up for confusion because it's already confusing for that child. And then you, you so what the brain does for the, for the brain that have been able to actually acclimatize with a lot of things, the brain will just say, you know what? We cram it, we pass, so that we just not, we just be at peace. So it's important for you to also consider a lot of these things. So I'm here to tell you that there is the growth mindset. It's important to help your child learn to take on challenges when it comes to learning. Where you, the child actually believes that abilities can improve over time despite setback. That's growth mindset. So whether you have a reflective thinker or you have a global thinker, it is very, in, it's very, very, very key right that you understand that your child can grow their strength in the boat now someone is asking is the child strength tennis i already gave that example at the beginning i don't know what the question is man so you might want to go to the beginning to find out you know about that now what you want to do is to help your child to build growth mindset right children with growth mindset believe that even if they fail at something they can eventually succeed at it. Feedback and what they learn from experience helps them to create the strength to improve. Okay? It is strength that affects learning. It's a strength that affects learning. Now, how does your child learn? How does your child learn? Talent, ability, skills, knowledge, and thinking style. Did anybody get that? Talent, ability, skills, knowledge, and thinking styles. Now, the knowledge, it is about, you know, the learning style of the child also. So, if you understand the child from these core areas of their life, the child will learn better. Now, looking at them together can help you understand how your child naturally learns. Right? So, it is that strength. It is that strength that actually affects learning. So, what is the talent of that child? What's the ability of that child? What's the knowledge? And what's that child's thinking style? That's where you're going to come from. That's where you're going to come from. So, take for instance learning to tie shoes children who have talent for thinking in pictures will have learned to tie their shoes by watching someone do it they don't need anybody to tell them do it like this now <clears throat> that's why you come out and say things like i didn't have to teach my other child why do i have to teach this other child because excuse me <coughs> <clears throat> 
Sorry about that. Got choked. Okay. Now, if that child who, <coughs> who is learning to tie their shoes, all right, thank you so much, who is learning to tie their shoes, right, is a child who has strength in matching visuals. You find out that that child is just going to pick up those visuals easily, right? <coughs> and then you find out that children with talent for taking things, you know, things apart and putting them back together may have learned shoe tying by doing it over and over and over again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Whatever a child preferred method is, it's likely that they learn to do things the same way too. So if your child hasn't learned to tie his shoes, for instance, right? Identify your child's learning strength can be helpful. So instead of getting frustrated with your child and say, this child is not learning, this child is not learning. your mates are tying their shoes. Then why not begin to, right? Why not? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you so much, TK. Why not begin to look at the strength of that child? So whatever the preferred method of that child is, it's likely that they are going to do every other thing, every other thing around that system. So when you identify the child's strength, it can be helpful to tailor their educational experiences and, their, and support their development. So I'm going to be sharing with you some strategies that can help you identify your child's learning strength. So stop getting frustrated that your child isn't learning. Start asking yourself, how do I understand the talent, the ability, the knowledge, and the thinking style of this child that I have? I often say that people who do not know their child, right, who do not understand who their child is, never parent effectively. Let me say that again. People who lack knowledge about parenting actually lack knowledge about their children. Because how do you want to know it? If you've never learned about how to, you know, understand a child's learning style, you've never learned about thinking style, you will not know who your child is. If I do a sample of opinion right now in the comment section, and I say, can you tell me who your child is? The child that you get better, who is your child? One of the things I'm going to hear now today is my child is um, uh, Bumi, and then Bumi is, you know, there, there is no in-depth knowledge of who those these children are, really. So you must begin to think, do I really know about parenting, what I should know? If you don't, you don't know who your children are. You cannot raise a child you do not know effectively. You can't. The moment you try it, it backfires. All right? So, what do you know about parenting? It means that you don't know your child if you don't really know about the things that you should learn. Now, how do you identify the child's you know, learning strength? Number one is observation. Watch your child doing, doing activities. Note their behavior. Pay attention to what they enjoy doing. How do they approach tasks? What seems to come naturally to them? Observe their reaction to different environments, the subjects, the type of activities. The type of activities. Number two is communication. Communication. Connect, connection and communication. You need to learn to connect and communicate with your child. Have an open, frequent conversation with your child about their interest, about their observation, right about their observation about ask them about their their you know what they like the activities how they feel children who lack the ability to actually express themselves to their parents are never known to their parents many of us our children can barely express who they are to us how do you know people without connecting with them and communicating with them 
That's why in the academy, at the central of everything we do, at the center of it, it's connection. Because I do not believe that you can ever make impact in anybody's life without connecting with them. So most of us are not connected. You are just, you know, corrections. That's, that's the only thing that you do. When you sample the parenting system that you have, just give it, you know, from one to ten, and you see, you see that your don'ts and your corrections stop the list. You are constantly criticizing, giving instructions, corrections. You will never know who you are parenting. If you do not put connection in front and take correction at the back, and I've said before that correction is not discipline. Hmm. Correction is not discipline. So if you think that, oh, I've been correcting my children, I've been disciplining, that's not true. Correction is not discipline. The fact that you corrected the child doesn't mean you, the child is actually learning the skill of discipline. There are two different conversations. All right? I shared about this in my book. Discipline is not an emergency. So for you to understand the strength of that child, you need to connect, you need to communicate. The next one you want to do is that you need to do a learning style assessment. Whether the child is visual, the child is auditory, the child is kinesthetic, that is their learning preferences. While some children may learn better using visuals, some learn better using hands-on. I've shared about my son, all right? Some learn better using, you know, um, the hearing aid. Learning style is just one aspect of learning strength. Hmm. And individuals have a combination of preferences. So at the upcoming Understanding Your Child's Learning Style, we're going to be focusing on learning strength and not just style. Because learning style is just a fraction of learning strength. If you do not understand the strength that your child has in learning, even though you know the learning style, you will still struggle. Did you get that? So you must understand the strength, your child's strength in learning new information. So we have a whole module, all right, that is going to cover the strength, the different aspects of strength that your child you know, how you can identify, how you can use it to work with your child so that you will be able to actually help your child assimilate new information better. So, that's one key aspect that you need to look at, learning style assessment. So, we're going to be expanding that. We're also going to be teaching you how you can use learning style to also discipline your child, effective learning style. You know, many times I see a lot of parents struggle with discipline. I am a, a, a core, you know, um, 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 person when it comes to discipline. That's a core area for me when it comes to parenting. Because I've come to understand that we discipline our miss because we don't understand what it is. So one of the things I do in my books when I write about discipline, I've written three, four books about discipline, and one of the things that I do when I write about discipline is to explain to parents what discipline really means and how understanding your child helps you discipline the child better. No child should be disciplined together. So that's why, you know, people come to me and say, oh, but, you know, it's the same beating that they beat all of us. The child just turned out not okay. My brother, you have some siblings, you are five. One of them just went astray. Meanwhile, they beat, 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 beat all of you to stupor. Four of you, you know, according to you, turned out okay. And then the other one went astray. And then you say to yourself, no, picking that will spoil, will spoil. Me, I turned out okay. All of the four of you, right? All of us. It's just that this guy's problem is more visible than yours is. That's just it. That's just it. So very many of the times, you find out that what we struggle with is just the big place of lack of knowledge. So because you are telling the child verbal correction, this is how it is. When you use verbal correction for our son too frequently, you lose him. Because that's not a cost strength for him. He's a kinesthetic learner. That's a cost strength. Does he understand? Is it too verbal? Well, yes, he does. 
but it's not a strength. And for discipline, you want to focus on strength because you're building. Nobody builds on weaknesses. Nobody builds on weaknesses, including you and I. Everyone builds on strength. The next one is multiple intelligence. All right? Multiple intelligence identify different types of intelligence beyond the academic skills. And what is this multiple intelligence? That's part of how you understand learning strength. What is this multiple intelligence? We're talking about linguistics. We're talking about logical, mathematical. We're talking about spatial. We're talking about musical. We're talking about bodily kind of things. We're talking about interpersonal, intrapersonal. And we're also talking about naturalistic intelligences. So you need to observe where your child excels and show interest among these different intelligences. That's, you know, social intelligence, emotional intelligence, and all of that. You must understand where he shows this, you know, the different intelligences. At the understanding your child learning style, part of what we're going to do is to help the child to also be able to um, work out the other parts of the intelligence and how to groom this intelligence. Remember, we spoke about growth mindset. That your child has a core intelligence in logical and mathematical. Our son was a core logical and mathematical person. So he does math so well that he would do 100% in math. That's also because that strength was harnessed. However, he has struggled with reading and with also you know, doing English language. What did we do? We didn't just say, oh, so this is how to identify. We used his strength to build his ability to read. Now he writes very well. So you must understand these multiple intelligences. Another thing that you can do is also practice. Practice. Provide opportunities for your child to engage in various activities. Inside classroom, outside classroom. That's one of the ways to actually help you to identify the challenges that they are facing. See, when your child is facing a challenge and you can see it, please be grateful. Help me put that in the comment section. When your child, effective parenting, right? Part of effective parenting is that when your child is struggling with something, please be grateful. Very grateful. It shows that it gives you feedback on what it is that you need to work on. So it is, you are able to identify, this is where my child thrives. This is where my child struggles. And these are the things I need to work on as a parent. Stop getting angry with your child's you know, mistakes. So be grateful, very grateful. In fact, you should do Thanksgiving the moment you observe that, oh, this child is struggling with something and I'm able to identify it. Don't come from the place of anger. Why? It's a blessing to get that feedback. It's a blessing. So when you get the feedback, you'll be able to go back and say, this is the thing. And the earlier you work on it, the better for you. So instead of attacking the child on that you know, mistake or that weakness and weakening the child, you will, you will turn around and say, oh, wow, thank God I knew this now. And then you begin to look for knowledge. How do I now help this, my child, to build skill in this area of their life? Stop fighting. That fight you're fighting will not profit them down nothing. Like in James' version of the Bible, we say, he profited thou nothing. Because the more you fight, the more it just doesn't make sense to the child. Remember, that fight is you hitting on the weakness. What you focus on is what grows. What you focus on is what grows. So the more you focus on that weakness, the more you focus on that, the more that weakness grows. So when you identify this struggle in these opportunities you've created, seek knowledge so that you don't mess it up. I've seen too much. Some of them I cannot say 
on public notes. But when I tell you that I've seen too much, for me to push, drag, push, insist that you learn, I know exactly what I'm, I'm talking about. So finding the errors is one thing. Knowing what to do with them to help your child is another thing. Stop getting angry when your child makes mistakes. When to help, stop, 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 you know, asking other ah, other people. It's because you, you are comparing with, with things that you shouldn't compare with. I'm gonna stop here before I start, you know, giving you bad boost from the inner circle. Yadas, are you here? All right. And I'm sure you guys are waiting for this weekend. And then seek feedback from their teachers. Feedback. All right, ask the teachers questions. Don't fight the teachers. Don't fight them. Many of you go to school, a child is struggling with something, and then you start blaming the child. It's because you are not teaching well. It is what there is need to fight any teacher. It doesn't even matter what it is that happens. There's no need. When it comes to parenting, always tell yourself that everybody on the journey of that parenting with my child is a helper of that ministry not an adversary teachers inclusive stop making teachers an adversary to you they are not seek feedback be grateful treat them like human beings if you don't the kind of feedback that you want right did you say don't was yet the kind of feedback that you want you will not you will not get it to Hi, Taiwa Kiwade. I see you, Masterpiece Women. <laughs> I hail you guys. Over the weekend, we're in Lagos for a retreat. All right? And it was amazing. So, seek, seek feedback. Somebody said, can we confirm with our teachers, our children's teacher, that their children like said, please learn how to understand it. Attend the course so that you can understand what, how your child learns. Unfortunately, that answer should have been yes but most of our teachers do not understand it unfortunately and if you can get your children's teachers to understand to actually get into the understanding of your child's learning stuff it will help you so instead of fighting look at your child the most important factor in the system many others will you know pay for their children's teachers you know get the school to Come and do the training on understanding your child's learning style because you need to understand it, yes, but the school also needs to understand how your child learns. So this is so important. All right? Another thing that you can do is portfolio review. That's what I call it. Portfolio review. When you review your child's schoolwork, their projects, their assignments, you begin to look of pattern of success and areas where they consistently perform well. This can improve insight into their strengths. So do a portfolio review from time to time. From portfolio review, you will understand what it is that your child has strength in. It was in one of those portfolio reviews, we just realized that our son is a bad artist, terrible artist. As in, he cannot grow to stay with life like the mother. And our daughter has so much strength in being artistic. The governor is very artistic. I'm not. But it's something that my son and I started to even now develop. What did I do? I started to learn how to develop that part of me. And then my son, you know, got interested also, started drawing, started painting. And we started to just develop it and go, you know, just like that. But if you keep hammering on what you see that this child isn't doing well, then you will not be able to help that child. So remember that when you're looking at portfolio, you're not looking to punish the child or to kill the child for not doing well in school. That's not what you're looking for. Sometimes, you have, I mean, open there, I see parents shouting on their children. I see parents, you know, you know, beating their children. I see parents getting angry. You fail this subject. You Sometimes I, I, I see parents, you go for, what's it called, visiting day. And what you're doing is that you bring up a book. You are talking about book. Oh, no, why didn't you do well here? But do you know that simple connection with your child can make them do well, can make them do better? Simple connection. Sometimes a child is not doing well, not because the child doesn't understand the structure. It might be different factors. Different factors. 
So you need to look into your portfolio review with insight. You can provide insight into their strength. Remember, the more of their strength you know, the more of their strength you can use. Time won't permit me to teach you how to do that, but at the, the understanding of your child learning outcomes, we're going to break it down. Nobody should miss it. And then there's the last one that I call interest, interest-based learning. Interest-based learning. Okay? <laughs> Somebody said, what about a child that doesn't know how to read or like reading or writing, but he will tell you what is in the know? What kind of learner is that? Come to the class, understanding your child's learning style, so that you will be able to actually understand exactly what is happening to your child. No free, them. this thing would get you to really understand who your child is. Don't depend on tips and hacks to understand who your child, who you are parenting. You need to find proper knowledge to actually be able to understand it. I did it, right? We just were watching and I was frustrated. I didn't know how my son learned. It was frustrating to me. The truth of the matter is that I am a very smart person, married to a very smart person. So I always told myself, well, I, my children should just automatically be smart. Every child is actually smart. We just don't understand it. Don't understand it. All right. So it is very important that you begin to actually tell her. And this interest and these things will help you tell her what it is that you will now help your child with. All right? That's what we're going to be doing in that class. So interest-based learning. Somebody's saying. <laughs> Encourage and support your child's interests. The beginning of this class, I asked the question. If your child is doing well in mathematics, and not is your child is not doing well in mathematics and doing well with tennis which coach will you hire a maths coach or a tennis coach and as i said the answer is a tennis coach because with interest-based learning you actually are able to get this strength better with interest-based learning so when you encourage your child's interest when children are engaged in activities they enjoy, they are more likely to excel and develop a passion for learning. They are more likely to excel doing the things that is their core. Every child is unique. Their learning style may also evolve over time. So what you need is to create an environment where you are learning. The child is not the problem. The child is not the problem. The child is smart. The child was born intelligent. The child was born in everything, right? Was, you know, do, is doing well. And it is so key that you put all of this in perspective. In Kechi, this question is, coach, answer me, what a child doing well and they play too much. What does it mean when we say a child plays too much? I want to really understand what that what that means. What does it mean that a child plays too much? Play is the work of a child. I don't understand the concept of a child plays too much. A child plays too much. That's the work of a child. My son is constantly playing. We call him Play Master 2.0. And I love it. Hmm. Love it. We love it. Without him in the house, the play is going to dwindle. We love the play. There's nothing like a child. You see this thing that we are trying to stop children from playing. Hmm? We're killing our children without knowing. We're raising children who eventually, in fact, there's a statistics on suicide. That children who didn't really play enough as children are more prone to suicide later on in life. Please, let's be careful. Play is part of being a child. Your child is not an adult. Thank you so much, God. Your child is not an adult. Your child is a child. Play is a child's work. That's how Maria Montessori said it. Play is a child work. Play is a child's work. If your child is not playing, it is a problem. Please don't kill your child 
Don't kill your child in the name of, oh, they say my child plays too much. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that. They told you your child is doing well, but that the child is playing too much. I, I don't know. I don't even understand the, the whole sentence in one place. So concentrate on developing yourself to help your child become. Leave all this. My child is going to play. And some of you stop your children from playing outside. Well done, no. <laughs> hey, you know, I I I, I, I see a lot of that. And, you know, we actually think, some of us even think that it's style. Some of us think that it's a thing. My children don't play outside. But your children play, all they do is sit down, play on the computer. There are so many things they will never learn. All right? Vicky said, did you see when a child is doing the things they enjoy? They are more open to learning new things they did not like to engage in before. Yes, that's what I said. That's what I said. And when you are putting all of these things in perspective if, you're, if you have a child who doesn't play please be worried very very worried thank you jenny for sharing that he said i didn't play much as a child i was suicidal for my teens to university days all right even after university please allow your children play play is a tool you can use play as a tool to build skills and learn Thank you, Coach Omolola. So the problem is not that your child is playing too much. Inside play, children are learning. Inside play. Play is what they used to learn. They are, they are skills, right? They used to learn. In fact, if your child is struggling being a social learner, you can use play to actually help them to learn, to build that strength. To build that strength. This is so key, right? On the things that you're doing. So let your children play, please. Let your children play. use it as a tool to get them to learn a whole lot of things. Games, whatever it is, let them play with sand. Stop getting your children. Stop, stop locking them up. Let them play with sand. Let them play as much as they can. Hmm. You need to see where our son and our daughter is playing. Till today, they are 14. They play. Please allow your children play. <clears throat> TK is a yard father now. Who is inviting TK to the yard? <laughs> All right. So um, um, it is important that we put all of these things in, in perspective and learn. All right. So um, um, we have come to the end of this conversation right you can get the books please remember to register remember to register for the understanding your child's learning style course it's going to change all these plenty questions we're asking it's going to change a whole lot right for you i'm going to learn so much your children if you just see your children flying if you hire lesson teachers right your hand is up you are a hirer of lesson teachers Give me the money. Come to me. Let me tell. When you are done, you'll be giving me the lesson money, teacher. <laughs> but you know the truth. You don't need, need a lesson teacher. Right? You don't need a lesson teacher for your child to learn. See, when a child learns from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock, any other thing you are teaching after 2, it's not a void. Trust me. Ask anybody who understand the science of the brain. Your child is not learning after 2 p.m. No child learns after 2 p.m. Yeah. No child learns after 2 p.m. So that thing you're doing, hmm? you're just actually wasting your money. Your child might actually be passing exams. Your child is not really learning. At the end of the day, your child can't create. You still end up raising a consumer because your child doesn't really understand the concept of learning. So learn how to help your child become. Don't run around. Don't run around. Thank you so much, Taiwa Kinwade. Taiwa Kinwade cried, said, the course changed the trajectory for my son. We were dead worried about his education and learning capacity. After adapting all the things learned from the learning style called course, our story is different. Many people have attended that course. We tell you that that course changed 
their lives. That that course, that system changed what it is that we did with our son. All right, that is the truth. So please get it in here, right? Somebody said no child learns after two p.m. Yes, toddlers, toddlers don't even learn after 11, 11 a.m. So all those things that we're running around for, you keep a toddler in school till what time? So the child is not learning. Once it's twelve noon, all the learning for your toddler ends. That's the truth. Because the attention span is so small. They can't learn more than one hour in a day. They can't learn more than an hour. Right? So it's not, you know, what can they be engaged with? They will be engaged with play. A toddler is supposed to play. Get into understanding your child's learning style course. Get into understanding your child's learning style course. You don't need a lesson teacher to raise a math guru. Trust me when I say so. Right? You don't. You don't. Once your child is at, at a certain... Children don't learn for so long, that long. You know, you, you go to school in the morning at 8. You, 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 your child, you know, goes home, you know, by, by 6 p.m. Because they are doing lesson. Or maybe they come home at 2 p.m. A lesson teacher comes at 3. They start learning. To, to, but they are not learning. Don't deceive yourself. They are not. Come to me. I will prove it to you scientifically, spiritually, physically psychologically and otherwise and otherwise toddlers don't learn after, after 11 a.m everything they are doing is just they're not really learning in quotes they're not learning there's no there is no need to hire a lesson teacher i say that again anybody who tells you that you need to it means that you don't know what it is that it takes there is a thing you will know it will exempt you from frustration there is a thing you will know. It will exempt you from frustration. Somebody said, after attending the learning style course last year, my, son, my son's learning style changed. I'm glad I did. Thank you, coach. You need this deliverance. You need this. You need this thing. You are just wasting your money, your energy, your strength. When you assess knowledge, it changes your life. All right? It changes your life. So let's go get the books, right? You can get any of my books on Amazon. And did I even tell you that the three rivers of marriage is out tomorrow? We're launching tomorrow. Yes, that's the latest book by the governor. I'm married. My husband is a marriage counselor, you know already. And the three rivers of marriage, of course, there's a lot of my story that is inside. That's the only part I do not like. You know, when I open, I'm like, this is me they are talking about. Oh, Lord. All right, but there's so much to learn. The three months a guide to improving communication, finance, and sex in marriage. All right, launch it tomorrow. I hope you pre-ordered. For those who pre-ordered, you're gonna get your copy tomorrow. If you didn't, reach out to the Marriage Seal Academy. All right, and then you will want to also get, of course, you know our books already. I've written 14 books that you can use to learn, right? That you can use to learn. Somebody said I will experiment this one. By joining your course, Oshay. Oh, <laughs> yeah, try it. Y'all come and try. It's okay. A trial will convince ya. We are not afraid. Eh? Just come. Mm. So come and try. All right. So you don't need that lesson teacher you're hiring. Don't experiment. Trust me. Come with that trust. I will prove it to you. So we have these fourteen books, different books. Um, um resolving sibling rivalry. Parenting launch plan from yelling to calm, um, sex educate your child like approval one to three, um, uh, working your child through puberty, how to love your child more, um, which other one, um, raising an emotionally skilled child. Somebody said they read this book, oh, and she said she solved a long age problem in their family forever, solving family problems through effective communication. We don't write rubbish. Show. We write books that deliver, right? This book, it's that's your manual. Yup, this book is the book that we just finished writing, you know, reading in the inner circle. We're just finishing it, but we're rounding off on it in level one. Amazing, amazing. We read discipline, discipline that works, and discipline is not an emergency, right? You want to actually get in, start reading books. Please don't read, don't leave your parenting to chance. Do not leave your parenting to chance.
start doing parenting intentionally from today. All right, thank you so much for joining me. As for those of you who said they will experiment my course with this one, we are waiting for you. We're not afraid. All right, you understand? That's why they call me the Ndabowski of parenting. You will know that when you come. But thank you so much for joining me today. It's been such a pleasure, all right, joining me today. And thank you so much for your patience and all the network drag, okay? So see you again on Tuesday. Inner Circle Parent, see you over the weekend. It is our monthly webinar. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for those of us who are just, you know, listening to me and learning, yes, we have an academy, and that academy is um, the Intentional Parent Academy. And we have a course that runs annually, right? That's the Inner Circle. But of course, it doesn't start until 1st of December. So right now, all you can do is to book and wait, right? But you can join the Learning Style course so that you can experiment. I like the way Messi said it. For now, all right? So these are the details of the Learning Style course right on my screen. Do not miss it, right? The early bed offer, the first early bed offer is 10,500 Naira. This first early bed offer is 10,500 and it's going to end in a few days. I want to look at the, the you know, when it's ending. You have the first early bed. It's going to change on the 15th of March to 15,500 Naira. Yup, 60,000 then. And then it will move to 18,500 and then moves to 20,500. You know how it roll. So you want to take advantage now and just get a slot into the learning style course. Yeah, that's, of course, you have your own yard fee that you will pay. So, yes, yes, yes. I'm particularly excited. Hi, Taiwo. I was in Lagos with Taiwo over the weekend. How oh, she's here, just, you know, jumping. And, you know, yes, I'm particularly excited about the Honor as a Skill webinar for Inner Circle Parents, all right? The Inner Circle curriculum is totally different. So we're going to get in there and do our thing. Can't wait for Honor as a Skill webinar. I hope you will come ready <laughs> come prepared though. all this can't wait can't wait can't wait come prepared that's the webinar of the year right thank you so much everybody for joining me see you again tuesday next week don't forget if you if you um already pre-ordered your book the three rivers of marriage reach out to the marital academy this book is live being held in our hands and yes we will um, get it um, coach, we are yet to recover from last weekend experiences. Yes, last week. For those of you who are asking me about the masterpiece, you might want to send a chat and ask about that. But of course, not here. But yes, we had the most amazing time you can ever think of over the weekend with that masterpiece women. Thank you so much, everybody. And do have an amazing, amazing day. See you over the weekend. Yeah, this.